in the tumultuous theater of World War II, where alliances shifted like the wind, a little-known battle unfolded over the skies of Nish, Yugoslavia, a battle that remains a top secret within the U.S. government. During the Allied race to Berlin on November 9, 1944, amidst the chaos of battle, American fighters faced off against Soviet fighters in a deadly dance. This was the air battle over Nish, a moment when friends momentarily turned foes and lives were lost in a tragic twist of fate. But was there something more than just a mistake? How did the Americans kill so many Soviets? Newly unearthed archival documents have shed light on the fate of over 450 Red Army generals during World War II. These officers met their end in various circumstances, with the majority falling victim to the relentless onslaught of the German forces. However, the shadows of history reveal a more complex narrative, as some generals also perished at the hands of the NKVD, and a few others faced untimely deaths at the hands of anti-Soviet partisans. Yet, among these grim accounts, one particular incident stands out as particularly contentious. The killing of a Soviet general by U.S. forces. This incident continues to be a subject of debate, leaving questions about the motivations behind it unanswered. The narrative unfolds on a crisp morning, the 9th of November 1944, as the 6th Guards Rifle Corps of the Red Army embarked on a journey from the city of Nice towards Belgrade. This column of vehicles, a symbol of the Soviet Union's relentless advance through Europe, was positioned a comfortable 70 kilometers behind the front lines. The once formidable Luftwaffe, now incapacitated and unable to pose any significant threat in this area, allowed for a sense of relaxation among the Soviet soldiers as they traversed the war-torn landscape. However, the tranquility of this journey was abruptly shattered at precisely 10 a.m. Unidentified aircraft swooped down upon the unsuspecting Soviet column, launching a surprise attack that would prove devastating. In a matter of minutes, chaos engulfed the convoy as the unknown aircraft rained destruction from the skies. The harrowing assault resulted in the loss of 31 lives, including the esteemed Soviet General Kotov, whose leadership and experience were dearly needed in this critical juncture of the war. The ravages of this attack extended further, as it obliterated 40 valuable military vehicles, leaving the Red Army reeling from the sudden and unexpected blow. In the midst of the chaos that ensued after the sudden attack on the 6th Guards Rifle Corps of the Red Army, confusion reigned supreme among the Soviet troops. At first, the soldiers on the ground believed that they were under assault from German reconnaissance aircraft, specifically the FW-189, which bore a resemblance to the American P-38 Lightning. The shape of the aircraft initially fueled this assumption, sending shockwaves of anxiety through the ranks. However, as the tense moments unfolded, a curious and perplexing detail emerged that shattered this initial assessment. It was not the familiar German crosses adorning the planes, but instead, white stars that graced their fuselages. This unexpected revelation left the Soviet soldiers momentarily baffled and disoriented. In a desperate bid to avert further tragedy and to communicate their dire situation to the approaching American aircraft, some Soviet soldiers resorted to waving banners or other improvised signals. Their intent was clear, to signal to the pilots that they were firing upon allies by mistake. Yet, whether due to the chaos of battle or a deliberate choice to press on with their mission, the American pilots did not appear to acknowledge or respond to these signals from the ground. The situation escalated rapidly, triggering an alarm among the Soviet forces to defend against what appeared to be a potentially devastating enemy attack. Soviet aviation was swiftly mobilized and scrambled into the skies. The prospect of friendly fire and miscommunication hung heavily over the battlefield, as both Soviet and American forces grappled with the unfolding crisis. What was weird the Americans, despite the fact that the command of the US Mediterranean Air Force already knew that there were no German troops near Nice. The Soviet troops were confused because they did not expect the appearance of the Germans near Nish. Moreover, the appearance of what they thought was an FW-189 was unexpected. The alarm first reached the soldiers of the 707th Assault Aviation Regiment, who were listening to the speech of the Deputy Commander for Political Training, Lt. Col. Sivud. The 866th IAP was activated, and the Air Defense Forces also began shelling from the Nish airfield. The anti-aircraft gunners managed to shoot down one American plane, which crashed a kilometer north of the airfield. All hell was about to break loose. 
The clock struck 1300 and the Yak-9 and Yak-3 aircraft from the 866th IAP roared to life and took off from the Nice airfield. Deputy Regiment Commander Dmitry Sertsov had issued explicit orders. If the rumor is true, do not engage the Americans, but rather, convince them to vacate their positions. Since it wasn't clear if it was Germans or accidental friendly fire from the Americans. The tension was palpable in the cockpit as the Soviet pilots embarked on their mission. As they approached what they believed were German fighter aircraft, the Soviet pilots braced themselves for a confrontation. Little did they know that a startling revelation awaited them. These were not German planes at all. Instead, they were met with the unexpected sight of 12 US P-38 Lightnings. The confusion on the Soviet side was overwhelming, as the Soviet pilots, mentally prepared to engage their German adversaries, found themselves face to face with American aircraft, their distinctive P-38 Lightnings unmistakable. What should have been a moment of relief upon the discovery of friendly forces turned into one of disbelief and apprehension. In a puzzling turn of events, the American P-38 Lightning pilots, rather than recognizing the red star markings on the Soviet Yak-9 fighters as symbols of their shared allied alliance, inexplicably opened fire on the Soviet aircraft. The once clear skies over Nice quickly transformed into a battlefield as the roar of engines and the rat-tat-tat of machine guns filled the air. The first shots fired were a jarring wake-up call for both sides. The Soviet pilots, who had trained for combat against the Luftwaffe, now found themselves evading the deadly firepower of American P-38s. It was a dogfight that nobody had anticipated, a frenzied exchange of gunfire and evasive maneuvers. Tracers and explosions painted a vivid picture in the sky as the Soviet and American planes engaged in fierce combat. Despite Deputy Regiment Commander Dmitry Sertsov's initial orders to avoid conflict, the chaos and adrenaline of battle overcame restraint. After one of the Yaks was shot down by the Americans, Soviet aircraft reluctantly entered the fray. In the initial assault, they managed to score victories, shooting down two American aircraft. The Americans, realizing the gravity of their error, attempted to flee toward Nice to escape the intensified attacks. However, the Soviet aircraft were relentless in their pursuit. In a harrowing moment, a Soviet Yak-9 locked onto a P-38 Lightning, unleashing a deadly torrent of fire from its 37mm cannon. The American plane, already damaged and trailing smoke, had no chance of escape, and it plummeted from the sky in a fiery spectacle. Yet, in the chaos of battle, another American aircraft retaliated with a well-aimed burst from its machine gun, hitting the Soviet Yak-9. The skies over Nice became a battleground where once allied Soviet and American fighter planes engaged in combat. Only when Senior Lieutenant Surinov NG flew up to the leading Lightning, and gestured to the pilot of that plane that they were Soviet soldiers and not German, the Americans decided to go south. After escorting them for a while, the Soviet planes turned back. The second wave of the attack took place when a flight of lightnings flew over the mountain range and again, mistakenly attacked the Soviet soldiers. However, the pilots quickly flew towards the Americans and showed them their identifying round alls, after which the Americans quickly left the area. Three American fighters were shot down by the Soviets. However, the peculiarities of this incident became even more pronounced when Edwinson, the lead pilot of the American aircraft, returned to base. Rather than reporting the incident, he took an unexpected and unconventional step. He proceeded to go on recreational leave in Rome. This decision raised eyebrows and fueled speculation about what had transpired in the skies above Nice. Adding to the intrigue, the Soviets took a perplexing approach to the incident. Instead of promptly clarifying the situation with their American allies, they initially reported the downed fighters as 18 and later even 30 in number. This exaggeration of the incident's scale only served to complicate matters further, creating confusion and doubt among all parties involved. Perhaps the most baffling aspect of this entire affair was the Soviet military's announcement regarding the death of General Kotov. Despite being aware that the aircraft responsible for his demise was American, the Soviets inexplicably categorized his death as death by enemy aviation leaving questions about their motivations and the broader context of the incident unanswered. The official U.S. explanation for the incident claimed that their objective had been the Skopje Pristina Road, where columns of retreating Germans were presumed to be located. However, the puzzling part of their account was the assertion that they had mistakenly targeted Nis, which was approximately 90 kilometers away from their intended target. This discrepancy in navigation left many skeptical, 
as such a significant error in target identification seemed highly unlikely for experienced pilots. Another explanation offered by the American side was that their aircraft was flying at a low altitude and had difficulty distinguishing between Soviet and German vehicles due to the presence of captured German equipment among Soviet forces. While it was plausible that some Soviet vehicles bore German markings as trophies, it strained credulity to suggest that an entire column could be mistaken as an enemy solely on this basis. The incident was eventually addressed through a joint press conference between the Soviet and American authorities, where the error and the misunderstanding were officially acknowledged. However, the details surrounding General Kotov's death remained concealed until the 1950s, casting a shadow of suspicion over the incident. In the decades that followed, conspiracy theories emerged to explain the incident. Some speculated that there may have been hidden motives behind the attack, involving espionage or covert operations. Others questioned whether the incident had been deliberately engineered to eliminate General Kotov or disrupt Soviet operations in the region by the Americans. During this time it is well documented that there was a significant portion of Americans who harbored negative sentiments towards the Soviet Union during World War II, with General George S. Patton being one of the most notable figures expressing such views. These sentiments were often rooted in ideological differences and geopolitical considerations, reflecting the tensions and rivalries of the era. Colonel Lowenberg's observation, based on his review of the gun camera footage from the incident, revealed that the red stars on the Soviet vehicles were unmistakable and easily identifiable. Moreover, radio transmissions during the engagement included an urgent exclamation of, They're Russians! Despite these clear indications of the Soviet identity of the vehicles, the attack continued, raising troubling questions about the motives and decision-making process of the American pilots involved. Adding a curious element to this story, but here is where it gets even weirder. An interesting person visited the U.S. fighter base just two weeks before this happened. Martin James Monty was a United States Army Air Forces pilot. He just visited the 82nd Fighter Group base and then subsequently defected to the Germans by stealing an aircraft which added yet another layer of intrigue to the incident over NIS and the broader context of wartime espionage and intrigue. Monty's actions, which included joining an SS propaganda organization, raise questions about the potential connections between his defection and the incident in which American fighters mistakenly engaged Soviet aircraft. While it's difficult to establish a direct link based on the information provided, the timing and circumstances surrounding these events do invite speculation. The fact that Smirsch files on the incident remain classified, along with the existence of classified U.S. files, suggests that there may be undisclosed details and connections that shed further light on the incident and Monty's actions. Yugoslavia, the USSR, and the United States give different accounts of the battle. The exact reasons for the attack are still a matter of debate, as are the results and casualties of the clash. All documentation referring to the incident is still classified as top secret within the US government. Now, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this remarkable and puzzling turn of events. Why did the Americans seemingly ignore the Soviet stars and continue fighting? Why did the lead pilot immediately go on leave without reporting what happened? Why is this incident still classified as top secret? And finally, why did an American defector visit the base just two weeks prior? These are questions that remain unanswered to this day. Do you believe that the Americans attacked the Soviets intentionally? Or was it a grave mistake fueled by confusion and miscommunication? The ongoing debate surrounding this incident underscores its significance and your perspective is valuable. And that brings our video to a close. Thank you for joining me on this intriguing journey through history, where once allied Soviet and American forces found themselves locked in a fierce aerial battle, remains a perplexing chapter in World War II. Remember to check out Patreon and Instagram below for more content. As always, we will see you guys soon.